One of the only films I know of that has a 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's a film that not too many people seem to know about. I'm Tom, and this is Six Luck Productions' review of 1114. <laughs> is a movie circling around a group of the most unluckiest people on the face of the planet and the series of unfortunate events that revolves around them over the span of about half an hour. All of it revolving around the main event that happened at, you guessed it, 11.14. And considering the end of the film technically takes place at the beginning of the film, I guess you can consider the whole movie a spoiler? I don't really know. I'll, I'll edit out certain uh, key parts. Like, I'll... I'll just not talk about certain parts. The film starts off with Jack, played by the little boy from E.T. Yeah, random, very. As a body falls onto his car, but it's not just any body, it's a body that has had its face caved in by something very heavy that is not the car. On the other side of town, Sherry, played by Rachel Lee Cook, is hit by a van at the exact same time. You have three guesses as to what time that is, and the first two don't count. The story splits into five different arcs. You have Jack, whose only real appearance happens in the first fifth of the movie. You have the three dudes who ride in the van, one of which is Colin Hanks, the son of the great Tom Hanks. Sherry, her father, played by the late great Patrick Swayze, and her boyfriend Sean Hitosi, and his co-worker Hilary Swank. Each arc goes on their own separate journey, some of which overlap within each other just when it's convenient for the plot. Every now and again we get shots of the clock to show what time it is, when all this is taking place, which adventure starts at what time, and major events. What I like about this movie is that even though it's shot out of order from five different arcs, everything ties in together very nicely. The script is written very tightly. Every plot hole left in one story arc is neatly tied up in another, and it all condenses into one easy-to-understand story. Scenes that don't make sense at one point are easily explained it from another perspective. By the end of the film, when all is said and done, there is very little about it that doesn't make sense. Of course, the writing of this film is only helped by the phenomenal acting that helps pull it all together. The cast of this movie is a combination of the more well-known underappreciated talent of Hollywood with the more obscure underappreciated talent of Hollywood. Cook is great in what scenes she does get, as the majority of the movie does revolve around her. Patrick Swayze plays her father and has some of the more amusing parts of the movie as she tries to protect his daughter and also at the same time try to figure out what the hell is going on. Hilary Swank and Sean Hatosi throw some really good lines at each other and have some really great moments, such as when one shoots the other in the arm. And real quick, I want to talk about Clark Gregg, because he is in this movie, he plays the cop. And he only has like 10-15 minutes of screen time, but every moment he is on screen is just gold. Because he just has the best reactions to things ever. At the beginning of the film, Jack stuffs the body in the trunk of the car just as Clark Gregg pulls up. And as he's giving Jack a breathalyzer test, he sees blood on the hood of the trunk, and he opens it, and he finds, you know, the body covered in a cloth. And at first he's angry because he thinks it's a female deer because the report that went in was that it was another deer that got hit by a car. And then he pulls back the blankets he's human feet and he just does this like jump backwards and he looks at him like he just opened his Christmas present and it was a dog turd inside. Easily the best reactions of the entire film go to Clark Gregg and he's not even a big presence in this film. This is the embodiment of a dark comedy. There are a lot of things in this film that shouldn't be funny but because of how they are portrayed they are. Like a dead body with his face crushed in landing on someone's car. That's not funny but when you see the reasons leading up to that it's hilarious. And even funny at who that person is and how his face got crushed in like that. It's terrible but you can't help but laugh just because of how completely random it is. And the movie's full of that, of these poor unlucky buggers stumbling around town trying to make everything right for themselves even though they don't succeed. It's a feeling of the world conspiring against all of them, that everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Also, there's a separate penis. I'm not kidding. It's, it's in this movie. I'm not saying whose it is, but there is a severed penis in this movie. 1114 is a movie that tells a simple story in a complex way and is very successful at it. The method used is nothing new, but it's probably the only time I've ever actually enjoyed watching a story told like this. The writing and acting go hand in hand to tell a compelling, humorous story about death and pain and anguish. There are very few, if any, loose ends that the movie fails to address, the one of which being towards the beginning of the film when Swank and Hitoshi escape from the cop car. Where they go, it's never explained, but since that technically takes place at the end of the film, even though it's shown no at the beginning, we're never going to know. Overall, I love this film. It's terrifically written, fantastically acted, and wonderfully directed and edited. It goes by fast enough that it doesn't overstay its welcome, and by the end it feels like it's told the complete story and feels satisfying. You can definitely find it at Newberry Comics in the movie bin. You can try looking at Walmart. I don't know if you'll succeed, but Newberry Comics is a definite. And overall, I just have to give this film an A because it seems to do everything right. That's it for this review. Tune in next time where I cover another darkish comedy starring Zach Galifianakis and Emma Roberts. It's kind of a funny story. 
Until then, I'm Tom, and this has been Six Slick Productions. See ya! If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, a favorite, subscribe to the channel, post it on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google+, Reddit, something awful, spray paint on buildings, make a flag of it, get a tattoo in your forearm, get a brand into your forehead. This is Six Slick Productions saying keep the spirit of the movies alive!